In high school, I had this really great art teacher. He was head of the art department at my private school, and I ended up taking his classes multiple times over four years. We bonded over our shared interests in books, music, and movies, stuff that I didn't have in common with many people my age. It was awesome to have someone to talk to about all that, and he even introduced me to new bands I grew to love. Our conversations were always in the classroom, with other students around, and nothing inappropriate ever happened. My mom, however, was kind of a gossip. After a parent-teacher conference one year, she came home telling me how much my teacher had praised me and made a comment that he maybe liked me too much. She even hinted that she wasn't sure if she should let me go on a school trip to Europe that he was chaperoning. That was just how she was always stirring things up. I ended up going on the trip, and nothing weird happened at all. Fast forward to now, I'm 26 and have long since graduated college. The other night, I randomly ran into him at a local bar. We ended up talking for hours, and before I knew it, I went home with him and we slept together. Back when I was his student, he used to talk about his wife a lot, but now he's divorced. He told me that the main reason for their split was that they initially decided to be a child-free couple. But he eventually changed his mind and wanted kids, and that was something they couldn't agree on. Here's the thing, I have an actual date with him tomorrow night. I'm trying to figure out how to feel about it. Yes, he remembered me from high school, but we haven't been in touch in over eight years. I'm not his student anymore, and I feel like I'm meeting him as an adult now, not as a kid. We went on an actual date yesterday and IT went great. I think we both had a good time and we had plenty to talk about without any of it really being about back then when I was his student. I think that's a really positive sign. He said absolutely nothing about having any sort of interest in me back then, but I didn't expect him to. He was truly always professional as a teacher. Despite my best intentions to take things slow, I couldn't resist the chemistry and physical attraction between us. I had promised myself that I wouldn't sleep with him again so quickly, hoping instead to give us time to really get to know each other, the current versions of ourselves, not the people we were years ago. But when we were together, all those plans flew out the window. The connection was just too intense to hold back. I went back to his house and we had sex. It was amazing, like we've been sleeping together for ages and I'm totally comfortable with him and he knows exactly what I like. I very rarely click sexually with a guy so quickly, it takes a while for me to feel comfortable enough to really fully get into the s and vocalize what I want and need, and for a man to understand what I enjoy. Not the case here. He even put me in my favorite positions without me saying a word, and I didn't even need my mini vibrator to get off like I typically do with partnered s I spent the night and we had s again this morning, without any awkwardness afterwards. I can't stop thinking about it or about him. We grabbed coffee near my house and he walked me home since I live very close in this little neighborhood. His birthday is coming up this week and he was planning to go out with a group of friends. He's invited me along. He warned me one of the people is a former teacher from the school I attended, but I never had this teacher and I don't think he'd recognize me at all, even if I still looked exactly the same as when I graduated. I decided to bite the bullet and just ask him if he thought it was weird at all, based on how we originally met each other. He said it's a little weird if he thinks about it, but he said he probably wouldn't have even recognized me if I hadn't told him who I was. He remembered me when I told him who I was, but he doesn't really see me as the same person. He asked me if I thought it was weird and I told him not really, but I think other people might think that it is. He said he's past the point of really caring what others think. I sort of regretted bringing it up because I don't think he was really focused on whether it was weird or not, and I don't think he was really thinking about the past at all. Now I worry I put the idea in his mind that this is weird and he's going to no longer be interested. Now, reflecting on it, I think he's telling the truth when he says he doesn't look at me and think of the person I was as his student. I actually think it's me who still sees him as my teacher. He's changed much less than I have, which makes sense since I was a teenager and he was already a full-grown adult. He looks nearly the same as he did eight years ago, so I look at him and I do see the same person. In my head, I still refer to him as Mr. XYZ. It feels weird for me to call him by his first name or to see him listed in my phone by his first name. So, now I'm realizing maybe this is more of a me problem. It really started to dawn on me after we had s last night. I wasn't thinking of him as my former teacher at all when we were actually in the act. But afterwards I went to the bathroom and my immediate internal reaction was OMG, I just fucked Mr. XYZ. And who knew Mr. XYZ could f like that? Then I realized oh shit, I'm thinking of him as my teacher. Either way, I want and plan to see him again and go out with him this week. I just can't see it lasting long term if I can't eventually get used to his first name at the very least.
Second story. It feels like my entire world has come crashing down. I'm 30 years old, and I never imagined that I'd be dealing with this kind of heartbreak, especially not from the two people I trusted the most. My sister and I have always been close. We're just a year apart, and growing up, we were inseparable. She wasn't just my sister, she was my best friend, my confidant. So, when I found out what she did, it felt like she stabbed me right in the heart. It hurt like hell. I trusted her with everything, and she turned around and destroyed me. And then there's Logan. We've been together since high school, for more than a decade now. I thought he was the one. We'd been through thick and thin. And I was so sure that after everything we'd been through, we were going to get married and spend the rest of our lives together. Our wedding was only a few months away. I'd been looking forward to this for years, and it was finally happening. Or at least, it was supposed to, but then, out of nowhere, my dad dropped the bombshell. He told me that Logan had slept with my sister. At first, I didn't believe him. I couldn't believe him. How could the two people I loved the most do something like this? It didn't make any sense. I felt like I was going to be sick. But it was true. My own dad was the one who told me because my mom had kept it from me. Apparently, my sister begged her not to say anything. And my mom went along with it. Can you imagine? My own mother, who was supposed to protect me, chose to protect my sister instead. She let me live in the dark while my sister and fiancé betrayed me. I've never been so angry in my life. I can't even describe it. It's like a fire burning inside me that won't go out. The first thing I did was kick Logan out. I didn't care about his excuses. He begged me to talk, to work things out, but there was no working this out. I threw his things out onto the street, and some of it went straight into the trash. He didn't deserve anything from me, not after what he did. But that wasn't enough. The pain was still there, festering inside me. And I couldn't stop thinking about my sister, Tia, of all people. We've always been close. I trusted her with my life. She was supposed to be a bridesmaid at my wedding, and she turned around and did this to me. How do you even wrap your head around that? Your own blood betraying you in the worst possible way. It was like she didn't care about me at all. How could she sleep with Logan knowing how much he meant to me? Knowing how much our wedding meant to me? It felt like she had shattered everything I thought I knew about her. So, I decided to hurt her the way she hurt me. I know it sounds petty, but at the time, I didn't care. She deserved it. Tia's really into gardening, and after her dog died, she made this special garden for him. It was like her way of keeping his memory alive. That garden meant everything to her, so I went over to her house, pretending I didn't know anything. I played nice for a while. But when I finally confronted her about Logan, I couldn't hold back. I went straight to her garden and crushed a few of her flowers. It wasn't much, but it was symbolic. I wanted to hurt something she loved because she had destroyed something I loved, my relationship, my trust, my future. She broke down when I did it. She cried and screamed at me, but I didn't feel sorry. I couldn't. All she could say was that it just happened. Like that was supposed to make it okay? Sleeping with my fiancé just happened? I couldn't believe it. I told her I didn't want to speak to her anymore, and honestly, I didn't want to speak to our mom either. She was just as bad in my eyes. My sister might have been the one who slept with Logan, but my mom chose to protect her instead of telling me the truth. It felt like she let my sister walk all over her, and in doing so, she walked all over me too. As for Logan, I made it clear that if he ever came near me again, I'd call the police. I didn't want to hear his excuses, his apologies, nothing. He could go to hell for all I cared. He had no right to be in my life anymore. We had spent over a decade together, and in one night, he threw it all away. How do you recover from that? I trusted him with everything. He knew how important getting married was to me, and now, because of him and Tia, the dream has been ripped away. I made Tia cry, and maybe I should feel bad about that, but I don't. I genuinely don't. I should be the one crying. I should be the one breaking down because my whole life just fell apart. My wedding day was supposed to be the happiest day of my life, and now I'll never get to experience that. Instead, I'm left with a broken heart, shattered trust, and a family that I don't even know if I can forgive. I haven't cried yet. Maybe it hasn't hit me fully, or maybe I'm just numb from the shock of it all. I don't know. I feel like I've been walking around in a daze, trying to process everything. But what's killing me is that I had to hear this from my dad. Not my fiancé, not my sister, not even my mom, my dad. The only person who had the guts to tell me the truth. It makes me wonder what else they've kept from me, what other lies they've told, 
I don't know what's next for me. Right now, I'm just trying to get through each day. But I know one thing for sure, I'll never trust them again. They've broken something inside me, something that can't be fixed with apologies or explanations. I don't even know if I want them in my life anymore. For now, all I can think is, fuck you, Tia. Fuck you, Logan. If they ever read this, I hope they know how much they've hurt me. I hope they feel even a fraction of the pain I'm feeling. After everything came out, I decided to expose my sister and ex-fiancé on social media. I unblocked both of them so I could tag them directly, which felt oddly satisfying. Shout out to you slash dot zeldapin for the script, I made a few tweaks, but it felt good to put it out there. Logan, the coward, blocked me right after he saw my post. And my sister? She didn't even see it at first. I ended up sending her my original Reddit post as well, just to make sure she couldn't escape the truth. But then, the call came. It was Logan's mom. She was furious, not that I really cared. But then she hit me with something that shattered me all over again. She asked me how I was holding up and if I had heard the news. My stomach dropped. I thought she was just going to add more fuel to the fire, but when she said those words, your sister's pregnant, it felt like the world tilted on its axis. Logan had told her to calm her down, probably as a last-ditch effort to make her stop tearing into him. The last thing I wanted to hear was that my ex-fiancé, the man I was supposed to marry, had gotten my sister pregnant. I hung up the phone and broke down, crying so hard I could barely breathe. It wasn't long before my sister saw my story in the post. She started texting me, blowing up my phone with messages begging me to take it down. All caps, desperate pleas, as if she hadn't been the one to ruin my life. She even threatened to come over and tell our mom that I was airing her dirty laundry online. The nerve of her, playing the victim when she was the one who destroyed everything. Eventually, she came to my house, pounding on the door like she was going to break it down. I couldn't hold back anymore. When I opened the door, all the anger I'd been bottling up erupted. I screamed at her words I don't even remember now, but I do remember her standing there, crying, insisting that I take the post down because she didn't deserve all the hate. She even had the audacity to say that if the roles were reversed, she would have forgiven me. That's when I lost it. I hit her. I'd never been the type to get physical, but the anger took over. It was a release of all the pain she caused. I felt a flash of guilt afterward, but it vanished when she retaliated by saying that it wasn't her fault Logan was tired of me. That's when I said it, I told her that I hope she ends up like her dog and that she deserves all the hate coming her way. I even apologized for not destroying her entire garden and her face while I was at it. I know I was wrong to say that, but at that moment, I didn't care. All I saw was the person who tore my life apart standing in front of me, still trying to make excuses for herself, she kept calling me evil. Told me I was punishing her for a mistake, and that I should rot in hell. I told her she had no idea what I was going through, that if the situation were reversed, she would have done the same thing. But she just cried harder claiming she had always supported me and that I was cruel for letting strangers on the internet attack her. That was when I told her that I didn't want to see her again, and if she came near me, I'd call the police. I was done with her. Done with her excuses, her fake apologies, and her victim act. She kept asking if I was really going to cut her off like this, and I just wished her luck with her unwanted child. I told her to go home and that I never wanted to see her again. That was the last time she stood on my porch. After she left, I had to clean up my favorite vase because she smashed it in her fit of rage. But honestly, I didn't even care. At least they're both out of my life now. I should feel relieved, but instead, I feel this strange sadness. I know it's for my own good, cutting them both off, but it hurts to know I'll never have that bond with my sister again. No matter what, she was still my sister, and losing her feels like losing a part of myself. I dodged two bullets, sure, but that doesn't make the wound any less painful. My dad called me not long after, asking me to take down the posts. Apparently, my sister is bawling her eyes out because people are being mean to her online. My mom, of course, is defending her, saying we need to ease up on her because she's pregnant now. I couldn't believe it. This is why I'm not speaking to her anymore either. She's always had a soft spot for my sister, but this? This is too much. How could she defend her after everything she did? I'm exhausted. I just want this to be over. Thank you to everyone who's supported me through this. Maybe I do need therapy, but for now, I just need to rest and figure out what's next for me. I have bigger things to worry about than their drama. I've got to pick up the pieces of my life, and somehow, I will. I've officially decided to go low contact with my dad today. He wasn't too upset about it, surprisingly, but he's still pushing the whole take down the posts agenda.
which is exactly why I made this decision. He doesn't get it, and honestly, I don't expect him to anymore. My mom's made it clear she wants nothing to do with me because, in her words, if I wasn't going to respect the family, there's no point in trying to get to you. As if that wasn't exactly what I wanted. It's like she thinks cutting me off is some kind of punishment, but it just feels like more freedom to me. Through all of this, my cousin and Logan's sister have been my rocks. They've been supporting me when I felt like I was drowning. My cousin's been keeping me updated, and apparently, my sister is in full meltdown mode. More and more people are finding out about the affair, not just in person but online too, and she's losing it. She even got into a fight with my cousin online because she's desperate for me to take down the posts. She keeps saying she's sorry and that she felt pressured into it. I'm sorry, but how exactly do you get pressured into sleeping with your sister's fiancé? She's not fooling anyone with that excuse. And as for Logan, his sister told me they finally spoke. He's apparently not ready to be a dad, but he also doesn't feel comfortable leaving my pregnant sister on her own. What a joke. It's almost funny how they're both trying to save face now. He's trying to play the hero, and my sister's suddenly the victim. They're made for each other. I can't say I'm surprised. The irony of all this is that despite the chaos, I've been feeling a bit better. I've actually gotten some sleep, good sleep, which I didn't think was possible for a while. My cousin and Logan's sister, who I've started calling my new sister, have helped me feel less alone in all of this. Their support has made a world of difference. It's still a lot to process, and I'm still considering therapy to work through everything. A tiny part of me feels bad for exposing my sister and Logan to the world, and I'll probably always miss the relationship I had with them, even though it's been destroyed beyond repair. But they hurt me. They shattered the trust and love I had for them, and now they're just dealing with the consequences of their actions. If they're not taking it well, that's their problem, not mine. For now, I'm focused on healing. I've lost enough sleep, shed enough tears, and spent enough energy on people who didn't care about me the way they should have. They made their choices, and now I'm making mine. And for the first time in a while, I feel like I'm on the right path. Third story. We met when we were just kids, nine years old. Little did I know that innocent friendship would evolve into something much more complicated. By the time we were 12, we started dating. Of course, it was that middle school kind of dating, where holding hands felt like a big deal, and everything was sweet and new. Things shifted as we got older. Around 15 or 16, he cheated on me. That kicked off years of being on again, off again. We'd break up, then get back together, and this cycle carried on until we were 17. Despite the rocky road, we always seemed to find our way back to each other. When I turned 18, I earned a full-ride scholarship across the country for athletics and academics. I should have been excited, but when I got there, I hated it. The team felt wrong, the coaches were unbearable, and I couldn't seem to make any real friends. I was completely miserable. During this low point, he flew out to visit me. We reconnected, and in a whirlwind moment, we got engaged. I was 18, and the world felt wide open. A little over a month later, he came back, and we had a courthouse wedding. Just like that, we were married, after the semester ended, I came back home. Shortly after, he joined one of the most difficult and prestigious branches of the military. I was 19, he was 18, and we were suddenly thrust into a whole new chapter. He left for three months for training, which was tough, but we made it through. When he returned for a short break, everything felt good, even though I knew more long absences were coming. He left again, this time for a few more months of specialized training for his job. That's when things began to unravel. A couple of years later, I discovered that during that time away, he signed up for Bumble, paying over $50 for extra swipes. He swore he never met anyone and that the conversations were just small talk. But that wasn't the end of it. I also found out that he had spent over $600 at a strip club. His excuse? He claimed he was pressured by seniors in his unit to go. He said he paid for a VIP room for a buddy who couldn't afford it because his friend would have gotten into trouble otherwise. He even spent that weekend hopping from club to club, further complicating things. At 19, we moved to another state and got our first house together. It was supposed to be the beginning of a stable life, but the storm was far from over. At 20, he deployed, and that turned into one of the hardest phases of our marriage. While he was overseas, he developed a serious addiction to pornography. It consumed him. I remember one night, sitting on the bathroom floor at 4 a.m., refreshing his social media account. I watched his following numbers rise every few minutes, all p counts. It became unbearable. He constantly pressured me for explicit photos and videos, making me feel like I wasn't enough. 
I thought if I didn't comply, he would find someone else who would. Our marriage, which had started with such hope and excitement, was slowly being eaten away by secrets, lies, and guilt. We were young, trying to navigate a marriage while dealing with temptations, distance, and betrayal. And it was tearing us apart, piece by piece. He came back home after six months, and at first, things seemed fine. But then I started noticing something odd. As soon as he came home from work, he would rush to the bathroom and take these incredibly long showers, like 45 minutes at a time. Sometimes, after he'd finish, I'd walk in and see little signs, like the lube bottle sitting there, still slippery, or the ring from it left on the counter. I tried my best to ignore it, but it was hard not to notice. Then one day, I saw a $30 charge on our bank account to someone with a very, unique name. When I confronted him about it, his face immediately changed. He looked away, ran a hand through his hair, and quickly mumbled some excuse about it being his buddy's wife, who bought lunch for their group at work. For some reason, I accepted that explanation and let it go. But a little while later, he got up, said he wasn't feeling well, and went to lie down. About an hour later, I got a text from him apologizing. He admitted that during his deployment, he had developed a pornography addiction. He confessed to sending money to a girl on a premium Snapchat account. He told me that he felt so guilty about it that he deleted everything right after sending the money. It hit me that the day this transaction happened, he had bought me flowers. Something he had never done before, not even on special occasions. Things started to blur after that. I can't quite remember the order of events anymore. But I'll try to piece it together as best I can. Maybe it was weeks or months later, but one morning, I woke up to a message from an old acquaintance on social media. I think we were still 20 or maybe 21. The message said something like, I just wanted you to know that, he, said this to me last night. Followed by the detail that my husband had told her he loved and missed her. He had sent those messages while drunk at a friend's house just down the road from where we lived. I wish I could remember exactly what she said, but all I know is that it broke me. She had called him out for being married, and his response was simply, I don't care. I remember the anger boiling over. I screamed at him to wake up, but he was still drunk, completely oblivious to the storm brewing. In a fit of rage, I yelled that I wanted a divorce, then locked myself in the bathroom. In my desperation, I hurt myself anything to distract from the pain I was feeling. I don't know how much time passed before he finally opened the door. He swore he didn't send those messages, claiming that he had left his phone plugged into the speaker at his friend's place and that his friend must have used it to send those texts. He even showed me a conversation with that friend where the guy apologized and claimed responsibility. Somehow, I believed him. The relief was overwhelming. I don't know if it was hope, denial, or sheer exhaustion but I felt this wave of relief wash over me, like a weight had been lifted. I thought maybe, just maybe, this nightmare wasn't real. But the peace didn't last. By the time we were 21, everything had come crashing down. I had gone through his phone so many times at this point, finding a trail of lies, social media history, links to OnlyFans, and payments to all kinds of shady sites. One night, I went through his bank account history since 2018 and found everything, the strip club. The Bumble charges, everything. He stuck to his story about Bumble, saying that a senior used his card because his own had been frozen. Again, I believed him. I don't know why. Eventually, the truth came out. I can't even remember how I found out, but one day I realized that he had been lying about that social media message to the girl. He hadn't left his phone plugged into a speaker. He had sent those messages himself, and when I found out, he got his friend to help him cover it up. They had both played me crafting this elaborate story to save face. My husband had even gone so far as to take my phone and delete the messages that the girl had sent me, warning me about what he had done. At that moment, I realized how deep his deceit ran. The betrayal was more than just infidelity, it was a web of lies spun to keep me in the dark, to make me doubt my own reality. And for so long, I had let myself believe it, I found out the truth about Bumble sometime later. I don't know exactly when. I think, by then, I had already figured out that he had been lying to me about so many things, and I kept pressing him until he finally broke. He admitted to paying for upgrades on Bumble, but swore he never actually met anyone. I remember him saying, I only paid for the upgrade because no one would ever swipe for me, as if that made it somehow better. I didn't know how to feel anymore, just numb. At some point during all of this, we went to legal on base to get information on how to file for divorce. That was a turning point. I had never seen him cry like that before. Sure, he cried once at the airport after we got married, sobbing into my chest so I wouldn't see, saying he didn't want to leave. But this was different. 
he was falling apart right in front of me. I watched him cry constantly, begging for forgiveness, deleting every social media account he had ever owned. He said he'd never marry again, that I could have everything we had saved up, and he even offered to pay for my college if that's what I wanted. It was like watching someone unravel. I gave in. I wasn't ready to give up just yet. We started marriage counseling. He did a complete 180. His phone was always unlocked and face up on the table, and I could go through it whenever I wanted. He promised to quit watching stopped hanging out with his friends as much, and even started cleaning the house and making dinner before I got home. For a while, things were really good. But that didn't last either. Every little thing triggered me a stray YouTube short featuring some half-naked woman, or a night out with friends that lasted longer than he'd said it would. Each time, I'd spiral into panic, convinced that it was all happening again. I couldn't trust him, and I couldn't trust myself not to break down. Eventually, I ended up in the hospital. That was the beginning of a toxic cycle. Every time he did something to trigger me, whether it was something as small as a YouTube video or a night of drinking with friends, I would lose it. I'd scream at him, degrade him, try to make him feel just as hurt as I felt. It was ugly. Marriage counseling helped. But what helped more was getting my own therapist. She became my best friend, someone who I could talk to and lean on when I had no one else. Living in that new place had been so isolating for me. While he worked with his friends every day and partied with them every weekend, I was left alone. My own friends and family were far away, and my social anxiety made it difficult to make new friends. I felt so alone whenever he left, and it became unbearable at times. Things started to improve again when I was 22. We took a vacation together, and it felt like we were finally making real progress. We were communicating, setting boundaries, and finding compromises that worked for both of us. For the first time in a long time, I felt like we were actually happy. When I turned 23, I moved back home a few months before his military contract ended. He stayed behind to wrap up everything with the house and his job, but eventually, he joined me. He tried working a new job, a blue-collar night shift that paid even more than what he had made in the military, but he hated it. He missed his old job and his friends, who had become his family. It was the first time I'd ever seen him truly depressed, and it scared me. He wasn't the same person anymore, and neither was I. Just five months later, he re-enlisted in a different branch of the military. I didn't want him to do it. I wanted him to stay, to build a normal life with me, but he couldn't let go of that life. He told me that he didn't even want a family. By this point, I had started nursing school and had reconnected with my friends and family. I had finally built a support system for myself, and I was starting to feel like I could have a life outside of him. Still, he left. He got stationed in a different state, but this time, it was only about 600 miles away, close enough to drive. We were actually doing well again. We texted and called each other a lot, and when he came back to visit after only a week, things seemed okay. I was hopeful again, but I also knew that we were walking a fine line. Everything was fragile. A little over a month ago, he left for a six-week exercise in the desert, across the country. For most of it, he was out of reach, his phone tucked away somewhere. I got one brief text from him a week ago. After that, nothing. I was trying to be patient, to give him space, but then I had to tell him that one of my pets had passed away. He replied almost immediately, which made me realize that he had his phone all along, he just wasn't talking to me. Yesterday morning, he sent me a message saying he'd be spending an upcoming holiday with an old military friend from his previous branch. After that, he planned to visit his extended family in a different state. He didn't mention anything about us. Or about spending any time together. We've talked a lot since then, but not about anything good. I asked him why he seemed to be pushing me away, and he said he was focusing on his goals. I told him I felt like I was being put on the back burner, waiting for him to be ready to acknowledge me and our marriage. I tried to offer my support, telling him he didn't have to be alone. He responded, you can't though. You say you can, but you didn't support college or the CIA, so I kind of felt I should just do this alone and get rid of some of the negativity. That hit hard. I had to face the truth, he was right, back when we were about 21 or 22, he talked about going to college. I scoffed at the idea because I didn't believe he was serious. He barely graduated high school, having attended four different schools and never managing to get above a 1.5 GPA. I tried helping him by doing his homework, but he didn't care. I even got him enrolled in the same online academy I attended, because public school didn't fit around my athletic schedule. I ended up doing every class and assignment for him, but he still didn't engage. 
he graduated from what's often called an alternative high school. When he told me he wanted to go to college, it seemed like a pipe dream. Then he mentioned he wanted to join the CIA. I didn't know how to respond. The idea seemed so far-fetched to me, and I didn't want to lie to him. I couldn't bring myself to say I believed in him, even though he wanted my support. I still don't know how to support him in something I find hard to believe he can achieve. The thought of not supporting him unconditionally feels awful, but I'm not sure how to reconcile that with my doubts. And now, here we are. Neither of us wants a divorce, despite knowing our relationship hasn't been the best. We both feel lost, unsure of what to do. I'd be lost without him. We've been together for more than half of our lives, our personalities are intertwined. We have the same mannerisms, the same jokes. We've grown up together and shared so many experiences, I need to emphasize that the times I've described are the worst of it. We've also had amazing moments. We've had so much fun together, he makes me laugh like no one else can. He knows everything about me and has been there for every significant moment in my life, I'm terrified of the future. I'm scared to tell my family if we get a divorce. I don't want to be another statistic. I know we married young and are part of a military family, and that many of these marriages end in divorce. I really thought we were different. I don't want to start over. I'm almost 24, and although that's still young, I've known him for 14 years. I thought we'd be starting to think about having a family by now. But he just wants to focus on his career and says he doesn't even know if he wants a family. I filed for divorce. It was a whirlwind, but the papers were signed a month later, and the divorce was finalized two months after that. It was an uncontested process, no shared assets, no children to worry about, thank God. Honestly, it turned out to be a lot easier than I had anticipated. The hardest part, by far, was breaking the news to my family, especially my mom. I had painted him as this perfect person to everyone, and telling them the truth felt like a betrayal. My mom was devastated, she cried for days. I felt awful seeing her hurt, but she was incredibly supportive. My family and friends rallied around me, offering support and love when I needed it most. I'm about to turn 25 and I've decided to pursue my nurse practitioner's license. It feels like the right track for me. This year has been full of new beginnings, I've made an incredible number of friends and keep myself busy with fun activities. If I'm not working, I'm out having a blast. My life feels full and vibrant, and I'm genuinely enjoying every moment. I try to keep up with comments when I can, but my schedule is pretty packed these days. Reflecting on everything, I realize now how horrific my situation was. I didn't fully grasp it until after I made that initial post and received so many insightful comments. Many people were right, I knew the answer to my question all along. It's strange thinking about it now. The past few years feel like a distant memory, almost like a story someone else told me. When I recall those times, it's like I was an observer, a bystander watching a tragic scene unfold. I think, this poor girl, and it's hard to believe it was me. My real life began when he was gone. We haven't spoken much since December. One of our last interactions was filled with anger and regret on his part. He even threatened to harm anyone I might date in the future. Yes, it's documented as best as I could. I doubt he'd ever follow through, though. I've heard through the grapevine that he's been busy with his own issues. Apparently, he got drunk, had a one-night stand, and now some girl is pregnant and wants to keep the baby. He, on the other hand, doesn't. I even heard she smashed his car with a brick, if I could give him one last piece of advice, it would be to start a savings account for the kid's future therapy bills. And maybe he should consider that many of his significant mistakes have happened under the influence of alcohol. But honestly, it's no longer my problem. I'm happy and confident in saying that he'll never hear from me again. And that feels incredibly freeing. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed today's story, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to Red Relationships to never miss a future upload.